Now that we have uh, learned about the transistors uh, or the MOSFET structure and the dimensions and the materials used, let's actually have some qualitative analysis on how it operates. Let's see how does the transistor operate. And uh, to do this, I'm going to start with a very simple circuit that is not really a useful one, meaning that in reality we never uh, connect the drain and source of a transistor to ground, but it actually gives us, like looking at this circuit and how it works, uh, it's going to give us a lot of insight, useful insight in understanding how the transistor or the MOSFET operates. So um, as the circuit shown here uh, basically suggests, uh, what we are doing is that the, we're connecting drain and source to the ground, and we're connecting gate of the MOSFET, which is this middle terminal, to some positive voltage, VG. Okay, so as I mentioned before, once and then, well, from the cross section point of view, it looks like this. So drain and source are connected to ground, as you can see, and the gate here is connected to some VG. Now, as mentioned before, when we connect some voltage to the gate, what happens is that, well, we are going to basically create a channel under the gate. We are hoping to create, uh, to bring a lot of electrons here and uh, to create a channel so that basically these these free electrons are go uh, we're going to call them a channel and they're going to help us to have a current from left to right or right to left but before uh, that channel creation something happens bef even before that so what what really happens is that because this this is a p-type substrate it, it's full of uh, free holes right it's a p-type semiconductor so it's it has a lot more holes than electrons. So the moment you actually apply this gate voltage at the positive side, the first thing that happens is that all the free holes that I have under the oxide layer, so inside the P-substrate, but just right, right under the oxide layer, all of these are going to be repelled, right? All of them are going to be repelled from the top and are going to be moving to the bottom, right? So I'm going to have all these holes moving to the bottom of the substrate. Um, leaving some negative ions, right? Because, well, when the holes are actually uh, leaving that area, I'm going to have some negative ions there. Similar to what we had with the, with the um, depletion region of a PN-type uh, contact or PN-type junction with diodes, right? Remember that when we connected a P-type material and an N-type material together, uh, we had some movement of charges, and then in the end, I have a bunch of positive and negative ions in the middle, which we call the depletion region. Here, because I'm only applying positive voltage to the gate, the holes are going to be repelled. And what I'm going to be left with is a bunch of negative ions here. And I'm going to call this region here, I'm going to call it the depletion region. Okay. Now, uh, one thing I want you guys to note that is that we still this thing still works like a capacitor, like the sandwich of three layers still works like a capacitor simply because, well, I have a bunch of positive charges at this side, and then I have a bunch of negative charges uh, that are basically mirror of those positive charges in the bottom, but, well, in, in the form of ions, right? So the the mirroring thing still is, is in place, but, uh, well, I don't have free electrons there yet, okay? Because I don't have any free electrons in the channel or in this area right under the oxide, you can imagine that no free electrons or no free charge carriers means that I'm not going to be able to have any current uh, between drain and flowing between drain and source, even if the drain and source, both of them are actually not connected to ground. Even if I apply some voltage between drain and source, because there's no free carriers here, I'm not going to have any current between them. Okay. So because of that, and because I don't have these free carriers, uh, I'm going to say that the MOSFET that I have in hand is off, meaning that, well, there's no current. So I have in the, I am in the off region. I haven't uh, turned on my transistor yet. Okay, so what happens if I increase this VG? Well, as I increase the VG, you can imagine that I'm basically uh, repelling more and more uh, free holes from the area right under the oxide or right under the gate and I'm going to have it uh, basically deeper and deeper depletion region right but then some other process or some other phenomenon that is happening is that as I'm increasing this VG because I have these two n plus diffusion 
kind of regions here so for the drain and for the source and they're full of free electrons i'm going to be starting to attract some free electrons from these two areas right and then what happens is that if i increase vg enough so basically if i if vg becomes sufficiently positive positive free electrons are attracted to the gate to the oxide silicon interface basically the area right under the gate forming a conductive channel so like basically i'm going to have first some negative charges here some negative charges here and then as i increase vg i'm going to have more and more and more of these negative charges on the two sides and then at a certain voltage that i apply to vg which i'm going to call that the threshold voltage the two sides are going to be basically attached to each other so the video on the right is actually showing that phenomena the, the colors are basically these colorful uh, parts are basically showing the density of uh, the electrons as, as it's mentioned here so it's the electron density and the, as you can see um, as i'm increasing the vg you can see that vg is actually changing from zero to somewhere around like 0.5 or 0.6 as i'm increasing the vg these electrons first are basically at zero volts they're actually on the two sides but then little by little i'm going to have more and more electrons and then at some point at the at the very like a, at the magical voltage which, which we are going to call it tertial voltage you'll see that the two uh basically bulk of electrons on the two sides kind of uh, reach each other and attach each other attach to each other and then we have a channel now we have a channel of free electrons between the drain let's say on this side and the source on the other side of course this this uh this this video is actually a little bit tilted but you can imagine that well um if you if you rotate it by like 45 degrees you'll have the same kind of uh, horizontal channel that you have here okay so that voltage that the voltage that the two sides actually the, the negative charges and the negative free charges or the negative or the free electrons on the two sides are actually reach each other we're going to call that the threshold voltage and the for the different MOSFETs that we develop or uh, are fabricated today, depending on the type of technology that we are uh, basically working with, this threshold voltage changes from 300 millivolts to 500 millivolts. You can imagine that in the more advanced technologies where uh, the channel length, this length, is actually smaller and smaller or shorter and shorter you can imagine that this happens at a smaller voltage because the two sides reach each other faster and then in the older transistors where uh, this was instead of like i don't know a few tens of nanometers it was in the order of like micrometers you can imagine that we had higher threshold voltages such as like 0 0.6 0 0.7 or even higher than that